Before we can begin to attempt to send humans to Mars, we need to know all about its living conditions. And what better way than to study analogous sites on Earth itself, like Iceland, McMurdo Dry Valley in Antarctica and Utah in US. Which brings us to our topic, life detection strategies in Iceland's mass analog sites. So uh, the sample that I had specifically analyzed was especially from this massive basaltic unit near a volcano in Iceland. And we primarily used two softwares, Bruker and MMAS, to generate a compound list and match it to the corresponding spectra. Uh, each specific compound spectra were then again obtained from each prominent peak, which I'll be coming to in a moment. And my other teammates have also been analyzing their own samples, after which all of these will be combined uh, to come to a specific conclusion. So uh, this here is the Bruca software, and I had added in the chromatogram, which I had received for my own sample and then averaging out the spectra I can I generated out the compound list or the m by z values so um, you can see to your left that we have um, shortlisted around uh, four to five peaks like peak seven peak ten and we have the corresponding m by z and intensity values and this has been copied onto the m mass software where we will do a series of steps like peak first of all we are going to do peak processing, where we are going to select our Maldetov PSD, which is our instrument, and then we are going to do further analysis. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we were planning, uh, we were doing the lipid profile of our sample, and you can see here there are several options like fatty acids, glycerophospholipids, sphingolipids, and uh, what we found, what I found for my sample initially is that fatty acids and glycerolipids were quite large in number. Now, of course, this can vary according to sample to sample. And of course, after this, we need to generate our compound list. And as uh, we can see here at the top in, in the top image, there are some red dots, which means that there are some false positives. So we need to be able to, so we need to remove these false positive first before we can continue with the analysis. And after we have removed that, uh, in my next picture, you'll be, you'll be able to see the isotopic alignment. And then again, we'll have to uh, adjust the tolerance levels and then again, uh, generate compound lists by annotating it. And finally, as you can see here is the final report that we need. Um, the green dots, which you can see, are the samples or the compounds which have been analyzed. So, um, this is peak 10, and as you can see, we have analyzed sphingolipids. Um, now, of course, we need to make sure that the error value is not too high, otherwise, we'll again need to uh, restrict our search and uh, select only the absolutely major peaks. So as you can see here, this is my error. And after, this is only for one peak out of the five peaks that we had chosen at first. So uh, of all the five peaks, we'll have to do entire, the, com the complete lipid profile. We have this one sample and we have two other major samples. And then all of these will again be combined to get proper results about what it exactly is the lipid profile in that area of Iceland. And after this, after corroborating the results, we are going to publish it into a manuscript. And yes, that's it.